Uh-oh. Do you really want to know which is more reliable? The Bavarian Money Waster BMW or the Mercedes? That's right, which is the more reliable version? Which is better built? Let's get right to it. Let's compare both of these vehicles. What we're gonna look at here is a brand new 230i X-Drive BMW. This has the four-cylinder turbo four. We're gonna compare it with Mercedes mid-level vehicle or lower class, which is the C-Class, also equipped in the C300 with the turbo four-cylinder engine. So we'll talk about both of them in some depth, make some comparisons as to the overall reliability ratings, and then we'll give you sort of the bottom line with, of course, the quality experience. Let's get into it now. When we talk about some of the authorities, for example, JD Powers and Associates, we talk about the comparison between BMW and Mercedes. In JD Powers, they actually rank them very, very closely in terms of overall reliability. BMW is one of those car brands that clearly is more sporting intention, sporting tuned. The handling is more sporty tuned, performance, and the drivetrains are generally more performance oriented. The handling, the brakes, everything is more designed for performance, where Mercedes is all about safety and that comfortable driving experience. Experience. And that's basically where the two differentiate. But what are, where does that leave reliability between the two? JD Power actually ranks these vehicles out of number of problems that you can experience. And of course, BMW, they rank as number 11th overall with 108 problems out of 100 vehicles. While Mercedes-Benz, on the other hand, ranks about 15th spot with 122 problems per 100 vehicles. So clearly, they're both very, very close. So that's drawing straws. But then we look at other advocates. Then we talk about Consumers Reports. Consumers Reports really talks about predicted reliability based on trends, history, where have they been before and where do we extrapolate and draw that best fit line and decide where they're going to be tomorrow. And of course with that said, believe it or not, BMW in recent years has really risen up the ranks. They're now hugging shoulders with the best Toyota, Lexus, Mazda, they're clearly the most reliable based on consumers reports, whereas Mercedes-Benz is way down at the list, almost close to the bottom. Now there's a lot of history and there's a lot of experience driving that, but unfortunately, I think there's some of that biasing. So let's talk about some of the key areas here. Well, this BMW, the 230 like this, obviously angel eyes are gorgeous vehicles. We have these kidney shaped grills. They have these sport tuned suspension, great wheels and bigger brakes. Of course, you've got the LED lights on the mirrors and of course, one touch access here. We've got a small sunroof. And of course, as you can see, they've got LED rear tail lights. We've got a single tip exhaust system down here or essentially twin exhaust, but on one side only. And this engine under the hood here is actually BMW's, one of their sweetheart engines in recent years. That's right, this BMW engine is what they call the B48, which is much better than the outgoing engines, which is the N20 on the four cylinder side. That had timing chain issues, oil filters that were basically sucking into the housing. They had leaks, coolant and oil and the like. This engine here so far is showing to be much more reliable with only minimal issues like crank sensors, which can't find top dead center. So you may have a running issue there. It may crank, but not start. There was a few other little issues with this generation. You had axle bolts, you had harnesses, essentially the actuator for the seat belts. You had airbag module problems. You had EGRs, so the exhaust gas recirculation in these vehicles were problematic in some vehicles, of course, in the earlier generation of the two series. But generally speaking, this engine in this car is a simple setup. There's less going on. You don't have air ride suspension like a lot of the higher end vehicles. Get into the X5s, for example, you have air ride, then you have airbags that can fail, you have compressors, you have relays, lots more failure modes, but this is a simple car with one of the most reliable engines in the BMW lineup. And so BMW now is getting better. So their B48 like this, and the B58, which is its big brother, the Turbo 6, and now the S58, which is the hot tune, the M version, of the B58 and of course now even the twin turbo V8 the N63 is even improved because it's gone through three generations now drastic changes improved cooling fueling and of course just a lot better more structurally sound and better shielding to keep a lot of the heat away from between the turbos and the engine so it doesn't have the oil consumption issues it doesn't have the turbo issues or the battery draw or the all of the other problems that the earlier generation N63 engines had 
So clearly, a lot of the modern day BMWs are built better, they're more reliable because of it. They're four cylinders, they're six cylinders, all vastly better. They've all been beefed up, structurally improved on the engine and the cooling, so they're much better. Now the Mercedes-Benz, on the other hand, has had some problems. Where's the reliability come in? Remember, some of the lower end Benzes, the CLAs, the GLAs, even the C-Class now, we're talking about some French borrowed engines. So French engines, they aren't even built by Mercedes, some of the lower end engines. BMW, for example, builds their own engines, Mercedes lends out and fulfills some of the lower end price point vehicles with French built engines, which aren't quite the same quality. Now, one thing I can say, when we're looking at quality differences, let's make that comparison, even structurally the way they're built, because I truly believe the way a vehicle is built and the way things hold up is usually a reflection of what's underneath the hood and what you can anticipate for years to come. Now, the overall question of reliability is a tricky one, because again, this particular model is a lot better, but if you go back seven or eight years ago, things are drastically different. So the question of how old the generational models are and the comparisons you make will determine even more so which one is more reliable, and which brand is more reliable. But let's take a look, start right here with this BMW under the hood. So here we have BMW right there, twin power turbo. So that's a twin scroll single turbo engine. And these cars here, obviously the turbo is tucked down in that space down there. You can actually see the wastegate actuator there it is in all its glory you do have these cooling system hoses here and this is a problem and a lot of those will start to leak because they snap on there but they've got these plastic ends it's not just a rubber hose you'll notice rubber and then you get to the end and they have to go and adapt and put this plastic on here but they have these snap rings so they're easy to assemble but they're hard to take apart because after they cook and roast for many hundreds and thousands of heating cooling cycles they start to split or leak at the base here and then taking them off sometimes is a challenge because they start to melt on to the fittings and unfortunately this isn't unique for BMW, but Mercedes, if you look, Mercedes has the same problems. Here you have a lot of the same configurations. Obviously, a lot of the parts are similar. You have a lot of plastics, unfortunately, but it looks like there's less plastic under the hood in general. You see a lot more metal parts in this vehicle than you do on the BMW, and that could be actually an improvement overall because everybody knows BMWs and the plastic under the hood has been one of their demises but here you also have the turbo down there on the passenger side you have the turbo four-cylinder engine you have the intercooler now you do also have these hoses that we spoke of with the BMWs like you see right there or like this the snap together hoses or over here you have the same type of fittings on these over coolant coolant type lines typical what you're finding on both mercedes as well as bmw are sharing similar type of hoses and lines and that can be a demise eventually those hoses start to leak because they see enough heat and heat and cold cycles and they start splitting and leaking obviously right here you see that's what dried up coolant looks like right there that can be from overflow but basically you wind up getting a bunch of that white splatter all over the engine compartment and that's a sure tell sign that you have a coolant leak so clearly it's a great engine overall not a lot of problems the only other thing to worth mentioning with the mercedes is that they have formatic noises there's comments of owners having problems with too much noise and formatic basically means this vehicle is all-wheel drive obviously we have the rear wheel drive prominently this vehicle is typically a rear wheel drive vehicle like the bmw but because this one is a 4Matic, that means all four of these wheels actually have the power to pull this vehicle along. And there's comments about the transfer case or basically the front drive unit can make some noise, especially on full lock or different activation. You can actually get some clunking or whining noises. If you're getting noises or vibration from any part of the drive, whether it's the engine, their differential, at the back or the front differential transfer case definitely got to get that looked at sooner than later because if there's even a chance on fixing the problem before it gets too severe then you're games and miles ahead now there hasn't been a lot of commentary about these engines failing these have been pretty robust the b48s on the other hand the mercedes c300 of course the turbo four cylinder as well has a little less power this has 248 horse and the mercedes c300 has 242 horsepower so they're very similar 
but this one actually has a little more torque. Now, both engines are pretty reliable. The C300, unfortunately, if you check some of the forums, that engine, that two liter four cylinder turbo that you're finding in a Mercedes Benz has had some issues with holding pistons. In other words, a few pistons have broken over the generations. You've heard about it. It's all over the forums. A few people are seeing detonation issues or holes in the pistons and essentially destroying an engine. A lot of that has to do with poor EGRE, exhaust gas recirculation, or even more so they're saying low fuel quality. So if people are using regular fuel and the vehicle can't compensate for it, it can start punching holes in the pistons. Essentially it's like taking a ball peen hammer and banging on a piston. BMW hasn't had so many of those issues. And again, the engines internally are probably slightly more robust than what you're finding in the Mercedes C300 engine. With that said, both are quite durable. Both are quite reliable overall. And other than a few mishaps here and there on the Mercedes, actually both are very comparable in both performance, fuel economy, and overall reliability. Now looking at the exterior of these vehicles, BMW is going with a little more conventional style, a little more conservative. Some would say it's more aggressive. I would say this probably looks a little more conservative and not as outlandish as the Mercedes. Whereas I truly believe the Mercedes is much more stylish. I mean, look at the front end of this. It looks great because it's got the blacked out grills there. Yeah, this one does look kind of sporty, but a lot of these with the chrome detail on it doesn't look quite as good. Now on the Mercedes, for example, if you look at the BMW here and then we swing over and we look at the Mercedes beside it, as I mentioned, you know, the front end of this car looks a lot more stout than the BMW. It looks wider, certainly has a better swath, and it certainly looks a lot more glamorous, a lot more rich. Of course, you have chrome down here and you have chrome in the bar, and you also have the big pointed star, which is big. Of course you have it there, but you also have it here, which is very prominent. When this car is coming down the road at you, it definitely has a strikes of presence. Of course, you also have these beautiful little dots and stars. It illuminates when you get light reflecting on it. It looks very beautiful. And the headlights, much cleaner, sharper, and clearly a glass maker's dream right here. This is a lot more intricate than you find on the BMW world. And overall, the car certainly has a stronger presence here. Then looking at the side, of course, what's the differences there? I mean, style is all subjective, of course. The Mercedes also, I believe, looks a little better from the side. It looks sleeker. This 2 Series BMW looks fairly sporty. And then looking at the Mercedes here compared to the BMW, definitely the side angle looks a lot sportier on the Mercedes here. The BMW is shorter, stouter, looks like it's ready for attack mode, but the Mercedes certainly looks sleeker. If you looked and sit down here at this perspective, it has a nicer slope back end, certainly has a nicer stretch, it looks sleeker. It's a more gorgeous configuration and design. But what's the quality like? Well, right here, this looks fairly robust, fairly well made. And I can say on this BMW, I've never seen a problem with body panels, although look at this. Look at that. Uh-oh. Oh, look at that. That's not great. But that's what you can find with some of these cars. And the Mercedes, we hit a bump and actually hit a set of railroad tracks and that panel dropped right off. It dropped by about a half an inch and we had to take it back into the dealer to get them fix that up. And of course, unfortunately, even the back end here looks a little simpler on this car. The Mercedes much more powerful looking on the back. And then even from the back end here, you'll notice the Mercedes has a much more beefy looking back end here than the BMW. The BMW is more squared and chopped looking, whereas this certainly has some beautiful lines. It flows, it's cleaner, it's, cr it's crisper. It's a more luxurious look for sure. You have a little more exaggerated vents here. You definitely have a nicer flow, more contemporary, sexier, and sleeker for sure. And of course, the fittings and materials are gonna be very similar. You have LED tail lights, BMW is a very simplistic setup. And the Mercedes is just a little bit more dialed in, a little more contemporary, if you will. But what's the quality really like? And which one is seem to be holding up a lot better? Well, I would say the BMWs seem to be feel a little bit more robust. I mean, even the, this here, this feels a lot more structurally sound. I, I do this and it feels stronger. It doesn't rattle as much. This is a coupe as well. And this is, a, as you can see, frameless. So in other words, frameless, sometimes you would expect the frameless window to sound clunky or the door to sound clunky, but this does not sound clunky. Open, close. Sounds more solid than the Mercedes. 
and operating the Mercedes door gives you a little more rattly, banging, clunking noise. It doesn't feel quite as well bolted together. And that's typically what I find. BMWs feel more structurally solid and sound than a lot of Mercedes. Sadly enough, that's kind of where that is. What about the interior of these vehicles? Well, the interior is honestly slightly dressed down in these cars. I mean, you do have some nice finishing like this. and Lots of plastic all over the place. Mercedes also has more plastic too. But I would say that where Mercedes is building their cars, they're putting a lot more detail. They're putting a lot more beautiful finishing. Like here you have some of that. Yeah, you have this interesting little detail, but the rest is a big piece of Tupperware. I mean, look at all that Tupperware finish across the top. And they, yes, they put this little piece of accent here and they put this little piano gloss. Like they put a few little details like that in here. And this little ring here, a few little odds and sods, a little bit more trim here, but for the most part, it's a lot of plastic throughout. And the Mercedes, on the other hand, is a lot nicer. It actually has a lot better materials. There's more chrome detail, more different types of textures and depths, and it feels like it's a lot more contemporary. But the quality, which one has better quality? Because again, as I've said before, quality, I truly believe, is directly related to reliability because it somehow draws that parallel. The quality and the effort put into the fit and finish often is the similar to what you'll find in the engine and the drivetrain and what's behind the scenes. And so it's very important to look and study that. Now also studies show that the average BMW in a 10 year time frame is going to cost about $5,000 more than the same equivalently equipped Mercedes Benz. Some of that has to do with just overall higher increased shop rates and parts costs, but a lot of it actually does come down to reliability and overall long term ownership costs will be lower on the same Mercedes as the equivalent BMW. So you will expect to pay a little bit more here. And the BMW, I have to say, feels pretty tight. This little 230 hot rod with the all wheel drive, you don't even feel the all wheel drive system because it comes in so seamlessly. It's basically as traction's needed. It's a very, uh, you know, solidly built system. The transmission obviously shifts where you want it to always. And I have to say that from the driving comparison experience, you're gonna find that the transmission in the BMW is going to be a little bit better. You're gonna find this transmission in this 230 with a ZF8 speed is a pretty reliable little unit. It's fun to drive, it's reliable, and I would expect no problems. Not to say that the Mercedes C300 has any issues. It likely won't have any problems either. There haven't been a lot of reports of transmission problems with that generation of C-Class, but really it comes down to the quality, the fit and finish of the body panels, the quality of assembly. Again, I would compare both BMW and Mercedes, very similar with a lot of the fittings they use under the hood. You know, turbochargers, cooling lines, cooling system, obviously all weigh a big part. I mean, if you're constantly leaking like a sieve, you're gonna have more of a tendency to wanna to get rid of that car. Both of these cars are gonna be very similar. You're gonna have those fittings. You're gonna have those hoses that split and crack. You're gonna have those little issues along the way that you're gonna be dealing with. And that's always going to be a question about reliability. And sadly enough, BMW has always been down that road of cooling line leaks and water pumps, especially with their electric water pumps in the N54 and N55 engines, they've now learned a few things. So the B48, the B58, they've gone back to a mechanical water pump, which is clearly where you're gonna see more improvements on the overall reliability, because that electric water pump was known to fail every 60 or 70,000 miles. Whereas on the other hand, mechanical water pumps, they might leak a little bit. You can monitor it. They got the little weep hole, you can keep an eye on things but they're generally more reliable and they're a lot cheaper to replace when a mechanical water pump fails than rather than when an electric water pump fails. Plus they're less susceptible. Electric water pumps, you know, they're electrics. And of course, as soon as you impose a lot of heat on a plastic body, plastic chassis of that water pump, and there's electrics in there, it's gonna start breaking that down. A mechanical water pump is simple. It's on a pulley, it's on a shaft, and there's a seal. The worst case you're gonna have is a seal that starts to let go and you're gonna start having weeping, but you're not gonna have all kinds of other modes of failures like you can with the electric water pump. So that's why modern day BMWs have gone drastically more improved on the reliability and Mercedes is trying to follow suit. Uh, unfortunately, even brands like Toyota in their newest Camry now actually has an electric water pump they're defaulting to. 
So time will tell even on brands like Toyota whether their reliability is where it should be. But either way, suffice it to say, I would say both of these car brands, Mercedes and BMW, reliability on the cooling system are gonna be fairly comparable from what I can tell in early reports. You may have some issues, you may have some leaks, but it'll be more associated with the hoses and the cooling lines and the thermostats rather than the water pump itself. Now with that said, oil consumption, not really a big issue for either of these engines. These are both quite tight engines on both the Mercedes as well as the BMW. But at the end of the day, it's going to be one of those things where, you know what, it's a lot of it comes down to maintenance. BMW, what's hurt them in the past is the extended oil service intervals because oil is used for the variable valve timing system. And if you have bad oil, it impacts your variable valve timing, your Vanos. It also impacts your rod bearings, your bottom end of the engine. And of course, it can start wreaking havoc. If you extend your oil services too far, what you could actually have a scenario where you start consuming or eating or breaking down those oil filters, which is a problem that you saw in the BMW N20s and some of the older generations. Now the latest, the B48, B58, there is some reports of that, but BMW has gone and reduced the service intervals on a lot of their modern day drivetrains, and that is starting to yield some benefits. And Mercedes-Benz, on the other hand, is obviously not dealing with similar issues as a lot of these other manufacturers, but regardless, suffice it to say, it, a lot of it really just comes down to maintenance. So if you do your oil services, you put the premium fuel in, don't neglect your cooling system, don't neglect any of the leaks or problems or strange noises that might erupt, all things equal, take care of your car. You're going to find both Mercedes C300 as well as this BMW 230 to be relatively comparably reliable. Let's talk about doing the overall quality experience on this car and then we'll talk about the Mercedes quality experience, summarize it at the end. Let's go. Let's try that now with the Mercedes. Let's go through the quality experience on the Benz. Okay, here we go. That felt pretty solid for sure. Right there, you'll notice the brakes, big cross drill ventilated brakes on this Mercedes Benz. Clearly more stomping, chomping power on this car than you found in that two series BMW. More solid. Loose here too, but you'll notice the BMW was like that, but the BMW actually came apart.
So which one is actually the better car? Fit and finish, obviously BMW sort of wins that game slightly. BMW, higher cost of maintenance, so might cause people to defer maintenance for second and third owners, which can lead to reliability issues. So which one is truly the better car? Many reports show that BMW is now coming up the rank, whereas 10-year-old BMWs are horrible, and Mercedes-Benz clearly had the rank 10 years ago, even five years ago. But now in the last couple of years, if you can summarize, Clearly, BMW has moved up the rank and you can question the integrity of the respective reports, but at the end of the day, clearly a lot of the parts and pieces and fit and finish are there and they show. And it feels like the BMWs are likely gonna last a little bit longer. As a result, I would say 10-year-old Mercedes-Benz, more reliable, five-year-old BMW is now the reigning king of reliability. With all of that said, check it out right there. That's the Mercedes versus Toyota reliability comparison. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll catch you real soon. Bye-bye.